Hello everybody and welcome back once again to a video update. This is the April 2024 edition, which is kind of weird to say for, uh, because it was only two minutes ago that it seemed like it was January. Christmas had been, Christmas had gone and it was January. Looking forward to 2022, 2024 and uh, grand plans and all that for the rest of the year and already we are a quarter, a quarter of the way through 2024 which is kind of crazy. Kind of, it's like, just like poof, blink and you miss it. <laughs> it really is crazy how quick time goes. But anyway, we're here now. So I thought today I'll give you the backdrop to one of my screenshots that I took, which was in the game Plague Tale Requiem of uh, this quite lovely scene here. And it's quite a, ho a holiday type scene. Beach, lovely water there. Because I've just come back from holiday, so I thought it was quite fitting. Um, you know, still in the holiday mood really. But anyway, uh, today's video update, I'm going to keep it to less than 15 minutes. You know the score. Can I do it? Of course, it's always a giveaway when you see the total time at the end, but maybe if I manage to do it, I'll leave it a black screen for another 20 minutes just to make you all think, oh, he's failed again when I didn't really. <laughs> As if I've got time to do that. But anyway, 15 minutes is the goal. So, what am I going to discuss in today's video update in 15 minutes? Well, here we go. First of all, very quick overview of um, the Bank Holiday Weekend. And then we'll look at the channel, plans between now and the summer. And then we shall talk about April the 13th. How about that? Because, of course, April the 13th is my anniversary date for starting uh, LPing. And this year, this year, it's been 14. Oh, it will be 14 yet. 14 years is it's quite eye-opening, really. <laughs> 14 years. Good Lord. Anyway, let's get to it, shall we? So, uh, yeah, as I said, went on holiday to Turkey. Uh, flew out on the 19th of March. Um, got back a week later. It's only a week's holiday. Never usually book a week's holiday. Usually do two weeks, but it was a bonus holiday. I'm going to give you all the whys, the wherefores, the full review... Uh, of the holiday, some pictures in the anniversary stream that will be happening on the 13th of April. More about that at the end of the at the end of this video update. But yeah, so I'll, I'll give you all about uh, Turkey and my holiday escapades. One of had a few drinks in the party stream, so that's that. But yeah, bank holiday weekend. Uh, some of you will know what happened because I put it in the Discord server and I also mentioned it again um, in the stream yesterday. I did uh, the Alan Wake stream, but just in case you. Uh, I've missed it or weren't aware or I'm not part of the Discord or whatever. Um, bank holiday weekend. You know, over, it's Easter weekend. You get the Good Friday off. You get the Easter Monday off. So you've got a nice four-day break. And I'd been on holiday, obviously. Um, came back on the Tuesday, the 26th. So I was in work for the Wednesday and Thursday. And I had to catch up on what I'd missed over the week. And then also had to do some stuff to prepare for one of my colleagues retirements so I had all of that to do all the catching up to do and also had to prepare for new trainees that were starting today so I had a lot of work to do in two days so it was it felt like I crammed an entire like four days worth of work into two days so it was very quite busy um, that two day period that I was back for so when it came to Friday good Friday or, or even Thursday night um I was really looking forward to my uh, bank holiday weekend. I thought four days of relaxation. And you know the score when you go on holiday, right? You go on holiday, you come back and you think to yourself, I need a holiday to recover from my holiday. Um, all the airports and messing around and, you know, because it's only a seven day holiday, especially you're kind of trying to cram some stuff in, do some trips and, you know, it's not really, how often... Uh, if I think about it, did I just sit there and do nothing? I was reading, doing stuff, walking about, you know, pushing my mother in a wheelchair is never easy. So, you know, you I come back off holiday thinking, hmm, I could just do with a, a rest. <laughs> and for me, a rest is just being sat here, sat in my own comfort of my own four walls, 
doing a couple of streams, maybe having a drink or two. Uh, that's my comfort. That's my relaxation. So I was looking forward to doing that over the Easter four-day period. So Good Friday comes around and it's about what time? It's about 10 o'clock in the morning and I'm thinking to myself, mm, I'm having a bit of a snooze. When shall I get up? When shall I not get up? Mm, I've got all this time to play with. I've got nothing in the diary today. Oh, I can just chill out, do a couple of little things and, you know, maybe go to my friends later. Oh, it's going to be a lovely four days of relaxation. Can't wait. And then I heard the most almighty crash Uh in coming from at the time i didn't know where it was coming from because i was kind of in a doze sleepy state i just heard the sound and if you've heard the sound of a loved one falling before which i have you know straight away the sound that it's some something is bad has happened someone has fallen something has happened it's not the sound of pots crashing it's not the sound of a, a plate smashing or something falling off a shelf it's the sound of that is, somebody has fallen. So I literally sprang out of bed like a flipping gazelle. Uh, I've never got out of, out of bed so quick. And that was even before my mother even had time, because it was my mother had fallen, you see. He didn't, even have, he didn't even have time to shout out to me before I was already out of the bed and halfway to my door. Because I knew instantaneously that something had happened. And so she, then, then the inevitable cry came out as, as she was shouting for help. And I thought, and for a brief moment, I didn't even know where I was going. Was, was she in the bedroom? Was she downstairs? I didn't know where the sound had come from. Anyway, it was from the bathroom. She had slipped. Getting out of the shower, she uh, slipped on the tiled floor because the mat wasn't quite where it's supposed to be. And she just went, whoosh, went a length, uh, banged a, a, a leg and foot against the wall. She did something. She fell on a thumb. She must have kind of put her hands out to stop herself. She obviously then fell on a thumb. Um, so for a brief hair-raising moment, you kind of think, what's happened? Have you hit your head? Have you hit this? Have, you know, is there any broken bones? You, you just don't know at the time. Um, she thought she broke her leg. She, her thumb was swelled up instantaneously and was all bruised. And it was like, but she thought she'd broken her thumb. High drama. Not what you need on your first day of four days off. <laughs> That wasn't my concern at the time. It, you know, I can look back and jest about it now. But uh, yeah, the main concern is, is anything broken? And of course, is there anything internal? Internal bleeding, all these kind of things happen when people get to a certain age uh, and start falling all over the place. Uh, these are the kind of risk factors if a fall happens. So all of these things are running through my mind. So obviously the ice pack goes on, you know, the pack of peas and the bag of ice goes on the, on the foot that was injured and goes on the thumb. And then I went back upstairs and she was sat there kind of in shock and I made her a cup of sweet tea. And then I thought to myself, as she sat down there chilling out, in shock obviously, well, I need to drink one more one. You know, as far as my mother's concerned, she just sat there now. She's, 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 oh, that's her, done. Uh, and I thought, no, I need to ring one one one. And then, so I rung one 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 and then took the phone downstairs after I got through. And my mother's like, what have you them for? Anyway, their recommendation was to go to A&E. Or to minor injuries, which is always within an A and E nowadays. Um, I live in Leeds. Uh, now A and E is uh, St James's, and it's usually pretty busy. It's usually very busy. In fact, I, the past couple of times I've been there for my own A and E kind of problems, uh, aka blood clots and coughing up blood. Uh, I was in there for thirteen hours and ten hours respectively. So I was like. Ugh. Now, when we went to 111, they recommended, obviously, go to A&E to get it all checked out. Um, they recommended Dewsbury, which is about half an hour away from Leeds. So we were like, why is Dewsbury? You, you, why have you recommended Dewsbury and not St. James's? She says, well, they just recommend where it's likely you're going to be seen soonest. Oh, so likely how Dewsbury's going to see us sooner than St. James's? Knowing St. James is like I know St. James is, you're probably quite correct. So I'll drive to Dewsbury for half an hour if it means we get seen quicker. So we drove to Dewsbury um, and their uh, A&E minor injuries was semi-busy. It had like eight people in front of us, which I suppose is, is quite busy, I suppose. Uh, but because of my mum's age and because she's fallen, you know, she got to the front of the queue. So we just arrived, there was eight people sat in front of us and she was called up next. I'm like, oh. Off we go, front of the queue. Um, so she had an x-ray and um, the nurse in Dewsbury Hospital said that she thinks that the bone is, she thinks that it's a, a thumbs might be broken. But she couldn't tell because the mother's riddled with arthritis. So she couldn't tell whether it was arthritis, whether it was a, you know, an issue with the, with the bone. 
So she referred us to a hand specialist uh, in Pinderfields, which is in Wakefield. So I had to go from Dewsbury to Wakefield, all on the same day, of course, uh, to then have her checked out by a hand specialist. So another further wait in in, in uh, Wakefield, Pinderfields. Uh, and then the doctor saw my mother and finally concluded, after looking at the, uh, the x-rays, that the, there was no broken bones. Uh, and then he tested her ligaments and there was no ligament damage because apparently thumb ligaments don't heal very well. And if you damage your thumb ligaments, it could lead to quality of life issues. It's like, ooh, I did not know this. So, uh, yeah, don't damage your thumb, uh, folks. I say that smiling, kind of smiling, anyway, because somebody... You know who you are. Did themselves a thumb injury uh, recently in the Discord. So, yeah, thumb injuries not recommended. And I'm sure that individual will attest to that fact too. And I'm just looking at the time, realizing this is not going to be anywhere near 15 minutes. <laughs> I need to be a bit more realistic with my uh, with my timings. But anyway, so the, the, the upshot is my mother's fine. She was, sh- she was shaken. She's clearly badly bruised, especially around the thumb, around the foot where she banged it. Uh, and just generally achy and painy because you know she's went she went with a great big thud you know so thankfully she didn't hit her head there's no internal bleeding all that kind of stuff so uh but yeah she get a bit of a lecture uh and uh, non-slip mats will be purchased very shortly um because funny enough we don't have non-slip mats we do have a handrail in the shower for her and a seat as well but uh, no hand so no no slip uh, not anti-slip mats, so I'm going to be putting one of them in the shower, and I'm be putting another one on the floor, I'm making sure it's big, a big one, so that if it moves slightly, it's still got coverage. Because slipping on a tiled floor in the bathroom for anybody, let alone somebody that's of a certain age, um, is not good. So that was my Friday. I finally got home at about half past five-ish. So we were out for a total of about six hours. So it wasn't too bad wasn't too bad but you know two hospitals at least an hour in the car well more than an hour in the car because it was an hour and a half an hour half an hour to Jewsbury half an hour to Pinderfields and half an hour back from Pinderfields to Leeds we had a McDonald's to celebrate her <laughs> her lack of lack of serious injury after we'd finished in Pinderfields we pulled up in a in a, in a McDonald's and had a McDonald's lunch um so that was Friday so I went to my friend's house on Friday night after all the shenanigans, got to my friend's house at about ah, six, seven-ish to decompress. Because, you know, a bit of shock and a bit of things catch up and you start to think after the events all panned out. You think, oh, bloody hell, could have been, could have been so much worse and oh, what a stressful day I've had. Not mention I've had a busy time at work over the past uh, two days. Um, I'm ready for Friday festivities, which was music, which was alcohol for me and uh, one glass of alcohol for her because she wasn't feeling marvellous, she said, but she, you know, she started to to drink. Uh, and she'd made a lamb curry, which was delicious. So she made some lamb curry, she made some chapatis, and we had we had our usual festivities. I vacated at a reasonable hour because I didn't want to leave my mum uh, on her own for too long after just falling that day. Uh, so I left uh, much earlier than I would usually do. Got home, my mother was fine. I came, chilled out. And then went to bed relatively early for a Friday, to be quite honest with you. But I was rel- I was tired. I woke up to a message the next morning from a friend who I'd just been celebrating with, if you want to call it that, that previous evening. Can you take me to A&E, please? I've fallen. So I rung her back. Now, at this point, we were in breakfast. I took my mum for breakfast as a treat after the previous day's incident. Uh, for an all-you-can-eat buffet breakfast in the in a beef eater, and I find beef eater breakfast actually pretty decent compared to something like a Toby Carvery, where our local Toby Carvery the breakfast isn't as good as it used to be. Uh, whereas beef eater, they cook your cooked breakfast fresh, but you can order as much as you want. They have the the, the continental breakfast set out, coffee machine, juices. It, it was really nice. I had a bit of gran- I had two bowls of granola because the granola was delicious. Um, I had my cooked uh, breakfast with toast, which was a black pudding, two hash browns, two fried eggs, beans, two sausages, three rashes of bacon. Quite a hearty breakfast. And then I was looking forward to having a couple of crumpets for the third course of breakfast. <laughs> Clearly, uh, I was very hungry that morning. Again, probably the previous day's events, uh, to be told that we'd uh, that the breakfast was packed away because they pack breakfast away at eleven. 
And we got there at half ten, and we were obviously at quarter past eleven, ready to go for our crumpets. They packed it all away. So, tip, if you're going to go for a beefy at breakfast and want to get a full three courses in, uh, make sure you arrive before half past ten. But anyway, I was part way through my uh, feast when I obviously checked this message, saw this message, um, rung my friend back, and... Uh, what happened was, when I'd left, she was pottering about, tidying up in the kitchen, and she'd blacked out, lost consciousness for a brief moment, and fell slap bang on her kitchen floor, um, and had injured, badly injured, her ribs to the point where she was in agony. As in when she moved, she twisted, she was sat in the car, any little bump in the road, she would be yelping out in pain. So I was convinced, she was convinced that she'd broken a rib or two. Um, scanned, uh, chest x-ray, uh, and then a CT scan, again because of the fact that she'd blacked out to rule out anything malicious there, uh, both came out negative. So her, her ribs probably were bruised. Maybe even cracked, because cracked ribs don't show in an x-ray very well, apparently. Um, and she's obviously still in agony uh, right this instant, for example, two or three days later. Apparently it's going to take up to four weeks to heal, which is uh, quite a long time. But uh, yeah, further tests are ongoing, uh, because blacking out is not something that is normal. And it's the first time it's ever happened to her. So uh, yeah, that was Saturday spent in St. James's a and &E. So Friday, I was in Dewsbury and Pinderfields, and Saturday, I was in St. James's, probably for about five hours. So, yeah, my Easter weekend could have been better. <laughs> anyway, there you go. That's now 16 minutes, and clearly I've got other things to discuss, so I failed miserably on that test again. Uh, right, here we go, 15 minutes. Um, so I actually i am quite knackered, uh, to be honest with you. It's only Tuesday. And I'm quite knackered. <laughs> I feel like it should be Friday already. I'm already looking forward to this weekend, to be honest with you. But anyway, um, what's next? Channel stuff. Okay, we'll get to the channel stuff next. Channel, uh, at the moment, we're playing Baldur's Gate 3. We're playing uh, Alan Wake 2. And we're playing uh, Suzerain. So, my plan between now and the summer is to finish Alan Wake, which should happen quite soon, because I think there's about one, if not two, streams left of that game so we could finish that next couple of weeks maybe even this week if, if i dedicate all my streams to it but we're not going to do that so uh next couple of weeks we'll finish on week two and i won't replace that immediately because the plan is then to switch to uh finishing suzerain uh i will intersperse that with some bg3 but my priority is to finish uh Alan Wake 2 and suzerain the main game so we'll finish the main game with suzerain uh, that'll finish after our wake, no doubt. Uh, and then I'm planning to start up the Kingdom of Rezia DLC, which was released last week, I think. Um, so I'm going to play that as well. So that'll carry on quite seamlessly after the Suzerain main game. Uh, and at that point, we'll play that together with bg3 for a couple of weeks just so that i get up to speed with baldur's gate 3 again after a little bit of a break and just so that i can get to speed with the new intricacies of suzerain and then at some point before the end of april and it's not april fool's day today folks i'll start up three kingdom yes i will okay i will i will i will i will Start of Three Kingdoms before the end of April. Uh, so that means that before the end of April, I'll be playing Kingdom of Rhesia, I'll be playing BG3, and I'll be playing Three Kingdoms. And that leaves us with a slight little quandary, but not a major quandary, in that come around June time, the uh, Game of Thrones um, House of Dragon Season 2 is starting. And I thought, ooh, Soon as I'll, soon as I'll be watching the first epic season again and getting into all the politicking and all the kind of things that happen with Game of Thrones, and then I'll be watching the new season as it starts. So yeah, we're getting once again back into all of the all of that kind of backstabbing kind of situation and all the the intricacies that happen, the plotting and the scheming. That's going to wet my whistle, as it usually does when I watch that kind of show, to playing some CK two. So I thought, ooh. So June time will be the perfect time to kick off season two of our Topcliffe 
Cliffs of Amber series. Because don't forget, we ended that last year. Last year, was it now? Or was it even two years ago now? No, it must have been last year, surely. Surely time hasn't gone that fast. Um, we ended that having uh, become... Um, the finally becoming the Lord Paramount of the Stormlands after an ebb, a flow, a twist, a turn or two. It was probably one of my most favourite, if not the most favourite series of CK2 I've ever played. It's qu- quite close between that and House Johansson, but um, of the of the bit of, of the Holy Fury DLC. But uh, it was oh, it was such a great uh, series. I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it very much. Uh, and so uh, I'm really itching actually to to start up season two, even more so once the uh, the, the, the Game of Thrones kicks off. It will certainly be getting me into the mood for some politicking, some scheming and plotting again. So I think it's perfect timing to start that up. So that's going to definitely start in June. So I'm hoping that come June, I'll be playing BG three. Three Kingdoms and Cliffs of Amber Season 2, which I think is doable. And if I have to pause one of the series to make room for the other two, because juggling three in the summer might be tricky, because obviously summer things happen, weather's nice, going out and sitting in gardens happens, and stream days might get put aside a little bit to enjoy the weather occasionally. It might be tricky to keep up to pace with three main series there. But um, I'll do my best. But if a game has to be parked to make room for the other two, it will be BG3 that gets parked for a little bit, simply because I've been playing that for quite a while, and it, you know I'm, I'm, I'm more inclined to give that a little bit of a backseat so that I can focus a bit more on the newer series. Um, so I'll juggle that. I'll play with that. But that's the that's the medium term plan. I'll wait till we finish. Suzerain to a finish. Kingdom of Rhesia to a finish before June. Um, in the meantime, back end of April, Three Kingdoms, that won't finish before June, so we'll be definitely playing that when the new CK2 season starts, uh, and Baldur's Gate 3 will be ticking along in the background. That's the plan. Like all good plans, they will probably fall to ruin at some point, but hey, that's the plan. So you will be getting Three Kingdoms, you will be getting Season 2 of CK2, um, and uh, yeah. You'll be getting some more of the of the stuff that's going on at the moment too. So hopefully that is agreeable with some of you. Um, it's about time we got back to some more strategy games, I think, on the channel. I do love a good strategy and certainly um, a decent total war game. Because uh, yeah, I was reflecting back on the um, the Rome remastered series um, just before I went on holiday, funnily enough, and I thought, oh, I do. I am missing a bit of total war action. I took the good Total War games are few and far between nowadays, but there's plenty of stuff to still be doing. There's plenty of mods on the old games. I still want to do a DE, DEI series on Rome 2. I still want to do the, the Med 1212 mod of Attila. You know, still holding out hope that I might even do a Med 2 remastered uh, at some point, like the Rome remastered, because I'll definitely give that a blast too. So, yeah, still plenty of Total War to be done, most of which will be mods at this point, but there's still more on my list. But yeah, Three Kingdoms is top of it. So it's coming in April. No fool here. <laughs> right, so wrapping up then. Because uh, time is ticking here. Wrapping up with the anniversary party stream. Of course, 13th of April 2024 will mark 14 years of me doing this, playing games on camera, whether it's a stream nowadays or in days gone by, recorded sessions. But yeah, 14 years of sharing my video gaming experience with you guys. Uh, and a l- several of you have been there from the very beginning. So uh, it's it's always a momentous occasion to celebrate uh, an anniversary with you guys. And this start- I think this started four years ago when I started doing this. I think my first one was my 10-year anniversary. So... Uh, that was when I first played Mountain Blade, if I recall correctly. But anyway, yeah, it will be happening again, as it has done for the past four years. <coughs> and it will be on the actual anniversary day itself, which is a Saturday, which is perfect because it's a weekend. So um, Saturday the 13th, um, anniversary stream will be happening. It's the usual affair. Um, you should know it well by now. You know, I'll be starting it around about 6 p.m. It'll be finishing around about midnight to one o'clock-ish. 
you know, I'll be ending it in a drunken stupor, no doubt, and we'll have got up to hopefully some fun and games along the way. And as per usual, it's up to you guys to help to set the agenda. So over in the Discord channel, after this session goes live, this video goes live, I'll be uploading, uh, I'll, I'll be creating on the Discord server uh, uh, a channel for suggestions for agenda items for the anniversary party stream. <coughs> I'm up for most things. So just, you know, I've got a couple of agenda items already in my mind. Obviously, one of them is sharing my holiday experience, for example. But I have a couple in mind, things that might have rolled over from previous streams that I never got around to doing. <laughs> might get done this time around. Uh, but if there's anything else that you can think of that springs to mind, that you think, oh, that'd be fun to do. You know, whether it's a practical activity that I can do on camera, you know, games to play. Uh, again... I don't like to play traditional computer games, video games on the channel because I do that, you know, week in, week out. So if it's going to be a game, something interactive, for example, with you guys, something multiplayer, or maybe a genre of a game that I've never played before. Because I did play Mountain Blade in my very first anniversary stream. So something that's different to the norm, certainly, if you're going to suggest games, for example. But yeah. Get over to the Discord channel and, and, and meet your agenda items uh, or suggest your agenda items, things that we can get up to on the anniversary. And hopefully on Saturday the 13th, on the day itself, we can have plenty more laughs, uh, discussions, fun and games. So yeah, it is happening. Um, get the date in your calendars. I'll put the actual stream itself up pretty soon so that it's on the channel and it's there, ready to go. I only have one ask. If you've made it to this uh, part of the video, then I commend you. But I just have one ask. If somebody would be good enough to create a thumbnail for the stream, I'd be very grateful. You know me. I'm crap at creating thumbnails. I'm crap at anything artistic. I do my best, <laughs> but I'm not the best at doing it. So, you know, I like the Christmas streams and the anniversary streams where possible to have... You know, somebody that's got a bit more competence in these things, uh, assisting so that, 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 that it looks nice and snazzy and stuff. So if you've got any ideas or want to give it a go and get involved um, for creating the thumbnail for this year's uh, anniversary party stream, then please just reach out to me on the Discord server. I'd be happy for you to, to lend a helping hand there. So that's it. Uh, 27 minutes, nearly twice as long as I thought. Right. Anyway, so I'm going to let you crack on with the rest of your day. Um, but yeah, there you go, folks. Enjoy your April. My next stream, uh, potentially could be Thursday before football, if football's late enough. Uh, and if it isn't, it'll be Sunday. But between now and then, I anticipate for sure getting some recorded videos up because we need to get cracking with these games on uh, now. So I've had enough of a break through, well, through a holiday which was obviously my doing but you know people falling over and all that is not my doing so by hook or by crook uh but yeah back back into the rhythm now back into the into the swing so i'll be getting some content up this week even if i can't stream so enjoy anyway have a good one folks 28 minutes later i'll see you soon